ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ మోఘ కర్మాణోఘ జ్ఞానాభిచేత సహక్షసీం ఆసురీం చకృతి మోహినీం శ్రీతాస్ట్రాక్టెడ్మోనిక్ అండ్ ఐతిహాసిక్ వ్యూస్ in that deluded condition their hopes for liberation their fruitive activities and their culture of knowledge are all defeated apart there are many devotees who assume themselves to be in krishna consciousness and devotional service but at heart do not accept the supreme personality of godhead krishna as the absolute truth for them the fruit of devotional service going back to godhead will never be tasted similarly those who are engaged in pi- protective pious activities and who are ultimately hoping to be liberated from this material entanglement will never be successful either because they deride the supreme personality of godhead krishna in other words persons who mock krishna are to be understood to be demonic or atheistic as described in the 7th chapter of bhagavad gita such demoniac miscreants never surrender to krishna therefore their mental speculations to arrive at the absolute truth bring them to the false conclusion that the ordinary living entity and krishna are one and the same with such a false conviction they think that the body of any human being is now simply covered by material nature and that as soon as one is liberated from this material body there is no difference between god and himself this attempt to become one with krishna will be baffled because of delusion Such atheistic and demoniac cultivation of spiritual knowledge is always futile. That is the indication of this verse. For such persons, cultivation of the knowledge in the Vedic literature, like the Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads, is always baffled. It is a great offense, therefore, to consider Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to be an ordinary man. Those who do so are certainly deluded because they cannot understand the eternal form of Krishna. The Brihad Vishnu Smriti clearly states, యోవేతి భౌతికం దేహం కృష్ణస్య పరమాత్మన సర్వస్మాద్బహిష్కార్య శ్రోతస్మత విధానత ముఖం తస్యావలోక్యాపి సచైలం స్నానమాచరేత్ One who considers the body of Krishna to be material should be driven out from all rituals and activities of the Shruti and the Smriti. And if one by chance sees his face, one should at once take bath in the Ganga to rid himself of infection. People jeer at Krishna because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Their destiny is certainly to take birth after birth in a species of atheistic and demoniac life. Perpetually their real knowledge will remain under delusion and and gradually they will regress to the darkest region of creation. Those who are thus bewildered. This first line begins. So what is this? Thus bewildered. In which way are they bewildered? Previous verse of Krishna states, Avajananti ma murha manushin tanumashritam param bhava majananto nama bhuta maheshwaram Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. they do not know my transcendental nature as, as the supreme lord of all that be so people who don't recognize krishna as the supreme personality of godhead they are condemned by krishna as being demons who despite all their activities their hopes for progress their plans their philosophy philosophical speculations they are ultimately defeated because they are thrown again and again into the cycle of birth and death everyone in this material world is defeated we have heard of the struggle for existence this uh, survival of the fittest but no one survives the crushing of material nature even if for some time someone appears to be in a very good position but in a short time 
they will be finished, just like we see. There was one uh, first Prime Minister of India. So Prabhupada confirmed what one astrologer said, that even though he was such a great world-famous figure, in his next life he had to become a dog. So we see so many great people there. Ultimately, they're, they're all, even in this life, their hopes are finished. The Prabhupada also told, told the story of Chitaranjan Das, very famous figure in Bengal at one time. Very wealthy, famous lawyer on top of the world. So much money, prestige, fame. One time he was sitting on the veranda of his house, looking morose. And his wife said, why? Why are you looking so unhappy? You have so much money, prestige, name, fame, glory, everything. National hero. Because he opposed the British. And one beggar went past. This, maybe it's like this bow. There's no money but this. Just wandering and singing some song. He said, I want to be like him. No cares, no worries, no concerns. And of course the beggar was looking inside the house and thinking, I want to be like him. <laughs> so everyone is, uh, everyone in the material world, they're certain to be crushed, destroyed, disappointed. Moghasha, Nirasha, Hatasha, these all words mean the same thing. Their hopes are destroyed. Everyone is hopeful in this material world. Everyone is hopeful how they will be happy, especially young. You see, not only humans, but even the puppy dogs. They're jumping and looking very happy. Then after some time, they're just a mutt on the street. And people throw stones at them, beat them, get out. So, in youth, everyone is very hopeful. You see, when they get, you see the wedding photo, and people hang in their house on the wedding day. They look very happy and hopeful and Somehow or other, even if the guy is uglier than me and the woman is very ugly, and somehow they dress them up and put enough makeup and dresses and make them look somewhat good looking. Then you can't, you know, they're looking very, you can see the look of hope. Now we're going to live very happily and everything will be very nice. I love you forever. And then you go, you go in the home and you see the, the once good looking young woman is now fat like a big pumpkin <laughs> and that happy smiling look is some dull look what, what happened to that hope everyone is hopeful when we marry we shall be so happy the reality is life is dull at best if not downright miserable so moghasha because people do not know the goal of life is to accept Krishna and all their hopes are bewildered. Nate Vidu Swatakuting Hivishnam Durashya Ye Bahirata Mani is Pallad Maharaja's described. That because people do not accept Krishna, because they don't know Krishna is the goal of life. Therefore, Durasha is another word, Moghasha, Durasha, Hatasha, Nir Nirasha means no hope. Durasha means bad hope, hope against hope, hopeless hope. Hatasha means all your hopes are destroyed. And moghasha means baffle, useless hope. So everyone in this material world is hopeful. This is maya. Maya gives some impetus that you will be happy. Don't worry, I will make you happy. But it's, a very, it's just like some drug, some poison, some feeling. You get some little feeling of happiness followed by so much misery. So this is the result of not being Krishna conscious. That in this life you're bewildered, you don't know what the goal of life is, you're miserable. And future, simply born to die. That's all. You're going to die, and what, what will happen after that? Again die, and again die, and again die, and again struggle uselessly to die again. So this is the uh, position of material life. So how do people cope with this? Most people... They deliberately live in a big illusion. They, de they deliberately don't inquire into spiritual life. Even if they take up some religious path, they, they deliberately keep with a very materialistic kind of consciousness. 
Just like you'll find there are many people who say, we believe in this religion or that religion. But then if we come to the point, well actually, what is the Bose like? Who is God? So they don't want to be interested in these things. Just to, God is there. He's in the church or the mosque or the temple. We go to pray to him. When we need something, we go to pray to him. That's all. So let him stay there and we shall stay here. And don't think too much about it. Just let him be God and give us whatever he has to give us. That's finished. No, don't go so deep. We find so many people here in India, they're supposed to be devotees of Krishna and family. But if their child wants to become a renunciate and surrender to Krishna, then they become very upset. They're supposed to be devotees of Krishna, but then when their son wants to dedicate their life, no, no, why don't you be Krishna conscious? You can also practice at home. You can also be a first-class materialist and also be Krishna conscious. Religion is all right, but not too much. Just a little bit. Don't be too religious. Being religious is good because then you will be moral and good and it's respectable in society. But giving your whole life to be a sadhana, what could be worse than that? That's what they think. So this is a condition of a materialistic person. He wants to avoid Krishna, sometimes even in the name of being Krishna conscious. Here in this report, Prabhupada's first sentence, there are many devotees who assume themselves to be Krishna conscious and devotional service, but at heart do not accept the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna as the absolute truth. So actually what is being Krishna conscious? What is being a materialist and what is being a devotee? There are different levels of devotional service. The first level, the neophyte level, the devotees are called Prakrita Bhakta. Neophyte devotee is called Prakrita Bhakta. Prakrita means material, and Bhakta means devotee. So actually these two terms are contradictory. How can you be a materialist and a devotee? Because devotee means he's thinking of Krishna. He wants to go to Krishna. His life is dedicated to Krishna. So Prakrita Bhakta means he's trying to enjoy the material world and still be a devotee of Krishna. So there are different kinds of Prakrita Bhaktas. One may be a very neophyte devotee who's interested in becoming Krishna conscious, but he's just very newly beginning, has very little idea. Another kind is someone who is a, he's a materialist, but he's approaching Krishna for some material benefit. But he doesn't really want to surrender to Krishna very much. So this kind of person has been described here in this purple. He wants to get some benefit from Krishna. Prabhupada called this time-serving, time-serving devotion. This is a phrase that Prabhupada invented. You won't find it somewhere else. Just like um, they have different kind of pujas here in India. Saraswati puja, Ganesh puja. So what they do, they make some from earth and straw. They make some deity and it's painted very nicely. And they worship for the period, whatever it is, Ganesh Puja is what, 10 days? <coughs> Something, whatever it is. Hmm? It may be 14 days in Gujarat and 9 days in Hyderabad and 7 days somewhere else. And whatever. Anyway, it's for a few days. And then, so they worship with disco music and wine and all these things. It's modern, it's modern Hinduism. And then when it's over, they take Ganesh or Visarja, throw him in the river, throw him in the sea. Thank you very much. We got whatever we wanted. Now get out of here. And then for another year. Time serving. We got some benefit. We had a big party at the public expense. So now no more need of Ganesh. Go. So like that, people, they, they think, let us worship Krishna. And they get some benefit. But they don't want to surrender to Krishna. Of course, Krishna is such that he is like a magnet. Krishna means who is all attractive. Krishna comes from Sanskrit. Krish, Dhatu, from which the root, from which the same word, Akarsha, attraction, Akarshak, magnet. So it's like if a piece of metal comes in the range of a magnet, it becomes attractive. So Krishna is like that. He may attract us 
to him. But if someone is uh, deliberately maintaining a sense of non-surrender to Krishna, such a person, as Prabhupada notes in this purport, he can never do that. This is a very heavy thing. It's very, very, very heavy <coughs> statement. We have to see in our own lives. But if someone does not actually have that spirit of surrender to Krishna, if they don't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then their devotion will not bear any fruit. They won't go back to Godhead. Just like you see in what is the previous verse, those who actually don't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then uh, even though they worship Him, apparently they don't get the result. Just like you see here in India, there's so many temples of Krishna. But you see the deities and you see in our Iskon temples the deities. And there's a difference. There's a great difference. Because in one temple the deities actually look like statues. Because the people who are worshipping, they don't have faith actually in Krishna. And if you speak with them, you'll find out. You may be shocked. Even here in Vrindavan, you'll, you may go to temples of famous deities where, and you speak to the people and they, they don't actually believe in Krishna. They don't have faith in Krishna. I've, I've heard some really horrible things. I remember in Dwarka, I mean, it's, it's all, I don't know, should I say or not, but it's the things they, Krishna got shot in the foot because in his previous life as Ram, he shot Bali. And where the people get these things? Where the atheists, they dream up such things. They're so demoniac. They're even they're, they're worshipping Krishna, and they're accepting respect from people as worshippers of Krishna. But their ideas about Krishna are so demoniac. I mean, how they even think of such things. They have such a materialistic concept. That's why we have to see Shiva Bhagavata and Bhagavad Gita through the Acharyas of pure devotees. It's useless or worse than useless to hear from non-devotees. Because they must misunderstand. Moga jnana vicheta saha. They may be apparently very learned. Here in India, you'll find many people who are very learned and, well, still there are some today. They used to do more. They have knowledge of Shastra. They can quote Shastra. But their understanding of it is demoniac. How they, even despite knowing, though they can quote so many verses. And they can even describe to you the philosophy of bhakti. But without bhakti, they'll describe to you what is the philosophy. But there'll always be some twist. Some knife. Just like uh, some years ago, it was 1989, Kumbha Mela. There are so many so called Shankara Acharyas, with big handouts giving lectures. So I thought, I'd listen, what is this person saying? Big Mayavadi. Thousands of people listening. So what is he talking? That uh, talking stories of Krishna Leela, how Bhagavan will protect you just like he protected the Pandavas. And, Kunti and Draupadi and you have to have faith in God. You have to do bhakti. Doesn't sound too bad. And then at the end of the lecture he said, and you always have to remember that Tattvam Asi, you are that same Bhagavan. <laughs> so all very nice. Speaking bhakti. All these Shankaracharya, these Mayavadis, they'll all speak about bhakti. Mostly in, if they speak in public, They'll never speak that you do meditation. No, they'll all speak bhakti. They'll, mostly they'll all speak bhakti because Shankaracharya himself, Adi Shankaracharya as they call him, he recommended for the mass of people they should do bhakti. Because when they, if they do bhakti, then gradually they'll have faith in scripture and they'll become purified. And then they may take birth in a Brahmin family. And then in... If they take birth in a Brahmin family, they can take sannyas in the Shankara Sampradaya. Then their spiritual life will begin. When after doing all these pious activities, they can finally take sannyas, Mayavad sannyas, and finally realize that the worship, the object of worship, and the worshipper are the same. So they say. So all this, mostly all this bhakti that you see going on in India. It's mostly, people all have this idea. They don't know Shankaracharya's philosophy, what it is. No, who knows nowadays? Because who knows any day? Because it's, it, it, it's so complicated, it doesn't make any sense anyway. But there's some general ideas which are coming through, which that 
You are all God. Ultimately, you are God. You are worshipping God, but in future, you will jump up on the altar and people will worship you. You will become God. You are God. That's what they think. So, mostly what's going on in the name of devotion, it's crippled by this wrong concept that we are all God. And it's very deep. Prabhupada said that in India, you scratch anywhere and you'll find. You see, like skin deep. You see, nice devotee. A little bit underneath Mayada. They're thinking we are God. And not only in India, because Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatta Dejita. Very widely spread. Everyone is, even in the Western countries, if we speak of God, mostly people, even people who say they believe in God, mostly they have some idea that I am you and you are me and we are all together. <laughs> Everything is all one. So actually, to, to establish this, who is Krishna? Stapitam ye, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam, Stapitam ye na Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadama, Yamda Dati Swapadanti, Kami Vaishnav, praise like this. But when will Rupa Goswami Kaupad give me the blessing? We can do something on, in this parampara that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has established to establish that Sri Krishna is the absolute truth, the personality of God. This is the absolute truth. This is the actual point of knowledge. Gyan. So-called Gyanis. What is the Gyan? Gyan means simply to understand this very simple thing. That Krishna, there is Krishna. He is the only important principle within all of existence. We simply have to understand Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Understanding that, surrender to Him. Understanding that I am his eternal part and parcel, tiny servant, and fully surrender to him without any reservation. And that is knowledge. You study all Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Satsandharvas, Vedanta Sutra, millions of books. And the only conclusion is that Krishna is the absolute truth, the substantive, he is everything. Everything rests in him. He is the supreme person. He's in everyone's heart. He knows everything that we are thinking, more than we do. Therefore we should surrender to him. Surrender to him is in our best interest. That is our Mogha Jnana. We are bewildered in our knowledge because we don't have the faith that if we simply surrender to Krishna, Everything else is taken care of. No more problems. Nothing else to do. Simply surrender to Krishna. That is the point the Krishna Conscious Room is preaching to the public and to ourselves also. We have classes regularly. Prabhupada said that in our temples there should be classes regularly. Going on, going on, speaking, speaking. Speak this. Why? Same philosophy. We're speaking the same thing again and again. Simply that we will become convinced by regularly hearing again and again and again. That after all, we have to surrender to Krishna. It's because our, our consciousness is covered over by Viparita Buddhi. This morning, someone was asking in class. I was giving class out the back there, so the subject matter of the verse was material attachment. So, the devotee was asking, but it, it just seems so natural to us. Just like this, uh, the focal point of material attachment is attraction between two sexes. So he was saying, well, it just seems so natural. And this, of course, is what modern so-called philosophers say. It's natural. So why not do it? Why stifle it? Why suppress it? Just do it. That is the position, our true nature, is that our consciousness will constantly flow towards Krishna. Just that we are performing all this sadhana, job, study, and service, and coming to Vrindavan, and all these things. What for? Just so that our thoughts, our consciousness, will flow towards Krishna. That is our natural position. But now we are in an unnatural position. 
where our thoughts, if there's no regulation, if there's no sadhana, then our thoughts will flow everywhere, all over the universe, except towards Krishna. That is explained in the Bhagavatam. Why is that? That we have come to this world of fear and delusion. We have entered into this material energy because we have rejected Krishna, because we are envious of Krishna. Therefore, viparyaya smritihi, viparita buddhi. Our consciousness is opposite. Our consciousness that should flow towards Krishna is now flowing away from Krishna. Unnatural position, diseased condition. Vichadvesha sarutena dvandvamahina bhāyata sarvabhutani sammaham sarya yanti parantapa Because of bad desire and envy of Krishna, we have come to this material world. And instead of thinking how to serve Krishna, we are now thinking how I will imitate Krishna, how I will enjoy this material world. So as a result, it seems natural to us because we are fully under the control of material energy. We're fully influenced by the powerful material energy by which yayasamo hito jiva atmanam trigonatmakam. We are influenced by the material energy by three modes of material nature. We identify with that. Therefore, it seems natural for us that we should enjoy this material world. But it's not natural. Not natural, and the result is that we simply have to suffer again and again and again. So actually, it is natural for us to be Krishna conscious. But because we are we are cultivating the wrong desire, therefore we have to suffer again and again and again. So in our Krishna conscious mood, we have to hear again and again and again from the right source, very carefully hearing from the right person. If there's a little bit wrong philosophy, it's very dangerous. That means Mogha Jnana, Mogha Asha. Everything will be finished. If you get the wrong philosophy, even if it's a little bit wrong, it's just like a tangent. If you go off on a tangent, slightly away from the right, from the straight line. The straight line is going from here back to Godhead. And if you go on a tangent, then you have to go a long distance on a tangent. Even if it's slightly away, then you miss. You miss the mark. So to get exactly the right philosophy, exactly the right understanding, which is not difficult to understand. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's not an unembodied power. He's not simply some idea. He is as he is, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Inconceivable means impossible to fully understand, but possible to understand as much as he describes himself in Gita. So that we simply have to understand and act on that. Understanding means if we actually understand, we will act on it. The sign of someone who is understanding Bhagavad Gita is that he will surrender to Krishna. Because Krishna said, surrender to me. So one who is understanding, one who is accepting Krishna, he will act on that and he will surrender to Krishna. So this understanding is not just academic knowledge, but it's also a matter of the attitude. If someone is very deeply envious of Krishna, then even after hearing this philosophy, even after joining this Krishna conscious movement, they will not want to surrender to Krishna. They will retain this hard-heartedness. And even they may assume themselves to be in Krishna consciousness, but ultimately they have some other motive. They may not recognize it themselves, maybe very deeply rooted, that uh, they don't ultimately accept Krishna as supreme. Actually, if we fully accept that Krishna as supreme, then what else is there to do but fully surrender to Him? If we actually understand then no more wasting time, messing about. We will be very careful not to be attracted by demoniac and atheistic views. So we're still trying to understand. We're trying to understand. Because very deeply rooted in envy of Krishna. We have to apply ourselves to the process of consciousness and pray to Krishna to help us along this path, at least understanding theoretically that we have to take to Krishna consciousness. We have to follow in the footsteps of great devotees who are fully non-envious of Krishna. 
who are not bewildered, who are not baffled, who are liberated, and to follow in the path of liberated souls who have full faith in Krishna and who know how to deliver Krishna. So this is a warning to all of us. There are many devotees who assume themselves to be in Krishna conscious and devotional service, but at heart do not accept the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna is the absolute truth. So if we don't accept that, if we don't accept that, that Krishna is the Supreme, then we may go on for some time in Krishna conscious, but after some time that enviousness of Krishna will manifest in different ways, such as we will find some excuse not to serve Krishna. We will blame, oh, this devotee is not good, that devotee. We will see uh, so many faults in the devotees. And then we will say, oh, I cannot be Krishna consciously. I will be Krishna consciously. They are, everyone in the world is not Krishna conscious. Only I am Krishna conscious. Therefore I will prove it by leaving the association of devotees. We will find so many excuses to avoid Krishna. Prabhupada said he was talking about questions at the end of class. He said there are two kinds of questions. One is how to understand Krishna. One is how to avoid Krishna. Mm -hmm. Someone will ask the question, well, uh, is, is, Krishna so, is Krishna so great? Could he, could he invent something that he couldn't do? Someone has Prabhupada this question. Now, if he can't invent it, it means he's limited. And if he can't do it, he's also limited. So it's supposed to be a trick question. Prabhupada said, yes. You can invent something you cannot do. Then he will do it. <laughs> so, this kind of question, so many nonsense questions. So, we have to see what is our own condition. Are we Satsuru Maharaj? Am I a demon or a devotee? Good question to ask ourselves. Do we read this Prabhupada one time, the group of GBC and Prabhupada asked, are you convinced? Are you convinced that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? You have to look in your heart. Are you convinced? If we're convinced, then what are we doing? Or why are we not fully surrendering to Krishna? So if we're convinced that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and I have to chant Hare Krishna with faith, and go on with this, and not be attracted by mind, we have full faith, and there's no question of doing anything else but fully surrender to Krishna. So we should be convinced. For our own benefit, as Krishna tells our journey, I will give I speak it is for your benefit. And, uh, otherwise, why? Krishna doesn't have to build a reputation as a great speaker. He doesn't have to become famous as a professor of Indology. <laughs> or get a Nobel Prize for poetry. He doesn't need all these things. He's speaking Bhagavad Gita for our benefit, just to convince us that we have to surrender to Him, our own benefit. And if we don't surrender, then the result we can see is, we can say, well, it's very heavy. It's true, it's very heavy. As Krishna is saying, don't surrender to me, then you're finished. It doesn't matter what else you do. Whatever, you may be a big yogi, yami, you see a big yogi, Durvasamun, he not surrender to Krishna. He got in so much trouble. What to speak of the karmis, they build big buildings, then they die and they become a rat in the building, because they're attached to it. You know that people, they build big buildings, and they, they be, they're so attached to it, and when they die, they come back in the same building, as a rat, or a snake, or a cockroach, something like that. So you see, they went to so much trouble to build a building and then they come back as a rat in the same building and someone put some rat poison. <laughs> <laughs> Papa told that once that uh, he was in Bombay. You'll find so many people in India, they keep a picture of their father on the wall, the deceased father. And they'll offer some incense every day. Papa was saying they're, they're worshipping the photo of their father. They don't know He's now a cockroach in the Kamal. <laughs> this is called Moghasha Moghakarma. No. That you think, I built this building 
for the happiness of myself and my family members. And now, you enjoy the building. You enjoyed it as a human being. Now, by your sinful activities, you have to become a cockroach. So, if you don't become Krishna conscious, Moghasha, everything finished. So, better become Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Any question? Uh, maybe, maybe not. If someone has a very deeply rooted demoniac mentality, even by practicing Krishna consciousness, they may not, of course, whatever they do, especially in the neophyte stage, uh, actually in all stages, but particularly particular facility for the neophytes is to work, perform devotional service under the, benefit, under the direction of a spiritual master who, Krishna doesn't accept mixed devotional service. Krishna, is, we have to serve Krishna with pure devotional service. So, the spiritual master offers the, the mixed devotional service to, he takes like the, the swan takes the mixture of milk and water, takes the good thing. So whatever anyone does, that is good for them. But we see that sometimes people, they maintain their own independent way of thinking, even after hearing so much. So it may be, if someone doesn't actually surrender, it may be after many years of practicing that they may, uh, they may come out with some totally bizarre philosophy. We've seen it in our movement. It's not, it's, I'm not just talking theoretically. That people, uh, you know, they're supposed to know the philosophy and they're supposed to be spiritual leaders and they come up with some completely off-the-wall ideas because in their hearts they never accepted Krishna as the supreme absolute truth. So whatever service they did, that will that will help them in the long run, but it may be a very long run. This Mayavad, this, this idea that Krishna is not actually the supreme or that we are all equal to him, is a very deep contamination. Unless, it, unless that is completely taken out and smashed, pummeled and destroyed, then uh, it's impossible to be Krishna conscious because Krishna conscious means being humbler than a blade of, plant, of grass. And Mayavad means being more puffed up than Ravana. That's the opposite. Trinada pi sunichana Ravana api dambi something like this. More puffed up than Ravana. So it's a very deep-rooted thing. Therefore, we should discuss this philosophy. Everyone should be engaged in Krishna consciousness. That's the opportunity given. But it's up to every individual to uh, accept in his heart Krishna or not, become purified. Hmm. Vision from, to, to change the vision from crippled vision. Someone who thinks like that, it's just an excuse. To me. They'll, they'll say, well, this, this fault is there, that fault is there, another fault is there, and not see the good things that are going on. Just like we hear so many criticisms of this movement from within this movement and without it, but look what's going on. I mean, even, even that you have the opportunity to... Uh, to say, well, Krishna doesn't want this. That means, well, how did you hear about Krishna in the first place? If it wasn't for this movement, you'd never heard about it. 
So there are so many good things going on. And, and there, always, there are problems and there always will be problems. Because we're in the material world, we're not in the spiritual world. Once um, <laughs> someone came to Bhaktis Tansas for Thakur, and said, he said, there's so many, he said, who's some so-called gentleman of the material world? He said, there are so many insincere people in your mind. They're not actually devotees. He said, you should throw them all out. And Sarasvara Thakur said, you throw them out, they have no hope. As long as they're here, they have some hope. At least they're chanting and they're doing something. They can become purified. He said, it's like if you go in the hospital and complain, well, everyone here is sick. Of course they're sick. It's a hospital. They're here for getting cured. At least they're taking the treatment. You have some hope. As long as you're taking the treatment, you have some hope. But if you don't take the treatment, then where is the hope? What did, what did Prabhupada mean when he said, uh, no ways are not What did Prabhupada mean when he said, no, no lazy or crazy people should be allowed to stay in our temples? Well, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Lazy, you can look it up in the dictionary. It means someone who doesn't want to, want to do any work. And uh, crazy, well, of course, there are degrees of craziness. More or less everyone's crazy in this material world. Um, but if someone is so crazy that he can't, you know, he can't follow the rules of regular, he can't, he needs constant supervision, otherwise he'll do harm to himself or others, then he's not fit to live in a temple. Shortly after I joined this movement, actually, I, I asked Makunda Maharaj, who was in England where I joined at the time, I asked him, how is it there are so many crazy people in this movement? So he said, that's a very interesting question. I asked that to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, you have to be at least somewhat crazy to join this movement. <laughs> <laughs> so from the material point of view, you have to be crazy to give up all hopes of material enjoyment, to dress in some bed sheets and shave your head. <laughs> Not even just shave your head, but have this thing at the back. I mean, <laughs> From the Western Kami's point of view, it's, I mean, nowadays, of course, people are getting accepted, but in those days it was considered pretty strange. <laughs> but uh, you have to be a material wreck, outcast. So people say, you're young, you're healthy, why don't you enjoy? You can be religious later, but while you're young, you should enjoy yourself. You're, you, you're, I, I remember the first time I went out on the street selling books. I've been in the movement, I think about 10 days or something. So uh, someone said to me right there on the street, and you, there are these people that, in London, they have the, I'm sure they have in other places too, these, these bogus photographers who they catch the tourists, as they just stand there and they take a photo. They take their name and address, and they say, okay, we'll send it to you, give us ten pounds. And of course they never send the money. <laughs> but they, they're expert at taking money from the tourists. So they see us as a kind of, our booksellers as a kind of threat, because if we take the ten pounds from them first, then they may not have it to give to the so-called photographers. So this, one of these photographers said that, uh, Ah, you shouldn't do that. You won't last. It's all to everybody. Trying to discourage you. You shouldn't stay. Don't stay. Don't do this. He was saying it's cheating. His whole life's business is cheating. So, uh, we have to see who will stay. Don't just do it as a sentiment. Understand, this is not from the material point of view, this is crazy. But actually, this is reality. And that's another thing Prabhupada said, that if, if when you're walking on the street, you see, I belong in a different world to everybody else, I'm in Krishna consciousness, then you're making advancement. So when we see, when we walk on the street, we see everyone, and we think, why don't they have tea like that? <laughs> why they, why they, they may think we're looking so, they look so strange, you know, they don't have shaker, you know, they don't have tilak, and, you know, and they're all talking for jalpa, what's wrong with them? 
identify ourselves with the devotees and devotional way of thinking. So time for our tea. And we'll have class again tomorrow if anyone would like to come and talk about these things. Prabhupada wrote in this style, spoken. You should see what is the what is the antithesis of Krishna consciousness so that we can come to the positive position. We have to cut out the bad things. The Moghasha. To come to the positive position. So tomorrow in the next verse. Jai Hare Krishna. Hare.